Hi, I'm Julia Fredenberg, and I'm a member of the New York City Artist Coalition. Hi, I'm Diana Mora, and I am owner of Friends and Lovers in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. So we just wanted to share some information that we learned about um, in business interruption insurance. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll quickly just want to back up a little bit. So understanding that in the last week, uh, everyone's trying to figure out how to get by and looking at our insurance policies, which we all know we've paid a lot of money into and realizing that every time we call a broker, they're pushing back saying, uh, don't file a claim, you won't be covered. So we have a some updates regarding that and we want to encourage everyone to actually file a claim. Um, there's one big thing that we should all know is that the brokers do not work for us. Um, and then this is part of a bigger movement to force governments who maybe uh, get rid of the exclusionary uh, clause uh, with regards to viruses. So uh, I'll let Julia go into more details from there. Mm -hmm. And just a disclaimer, like we are not lawyers. Um, this is just some information that we learned. Um, so likely if you have business interruption insurance, it likely only covers physical damage um, to your business and excludes um, viruses or bacteria. Um, but what we've been hearing is that even if you don't think that your business uh, interruption insurance covers you, file a claim anyway. That's the most important thing, like file that claim. Um, so that if there's a situation where um, the state government changes the law and says the insurance companies do have to cover um, viruses, then you've already filed your claim. Like you have nothing to lose by filing a claim and only to gain. And the reason why we think this may happen, because it's already happened in New Jersey, and we're thinking that this will be a bigger movement because apparently insurance companies will all follow each other. And the other point is we're not the only companies making noises, uh, noise around this. I know that the Hospitality Alliance is also pushing back. Essentially, if you offer an exclusion, you have to offer a solution. And with the exclusion of a virus or bacteria, they never offered any of us the option to buy coverage should a virus or bacteria uh, arise. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of what's pushing the across the, the, the motivating everyone. And the other point to that is uh, if you also have any employees that may have tested positive or a patron, you, you know, we have to respect their privacy by all means, but trying to get that documentation will help support that. You actually do have physical property damage because there are microscopic organisms in your vicinity that will not allow you to sell because no one wants to touch your product. So it does ultimately go down to the nitty gritty of if someone's sick, you actually do have property damage. So you should, you should be documenting if you have any um, proof that there is um, any infection within, within your business. Um, but then also, um, you should also be documenting any loss of revenue. Um, and this is a great time to catch up on your bookkeeping. Okay, so um, we also heard about like what kinds of things you should um, and should not post on social or post publicly in terms of how it might impact your um, insurance. Um, so you should not post anything that says that you are not infected um, because your insurance company may come back and say um, that uh, you, they have proof that, that your business was not infected. Um, so you can say something like on social media or public statements, something like as a result of COVID-19 and in keeping with state and social distancing requirements, we have uh, closed or we've converted to delivery and takeout only, something like that. So uh, I do recommend going back and scrubbing anything that may have looked like it was an optional closing. The idea is to show uh, be definitive and that all businesses were affected, the closing were not really optional, and that's it because it would be something that they would dig up during discovery to prove that, that this wasn't really affecting our businesses. So try and just make sure it's very clean language. Right. 
Also, um, your landlord, um, your landlord may have insurance for lost rent, um, and you may be listed as additionally insured on their policy. Um, so talk to them, um, see if, if that's the case. And vice versa, you may also have them listed as an additional insured under your policy. So the insurance company would have to pay them uh, the rent. And then also review your lease because there might be a force majeure clause, which would mean that you might be able to freeze your rent. So there's a lot more to it. Um, so that was interesting learning for us. I do want to back up a little bit and I was cutting out, so I don't know if I missed this with regards to delivery and takeout. If you can offer it great, it will not affect the claim in the sense that you're doing everything that you can to mitigate losses. So that's an important point. If you can and you want to, don't worry that it will be a, an issue later on with the claim or with whatever it is we're pushing forward because it won't. Yeah, totally. Um, in terms of advocacy, um, right now we need to be pushing our state legislators um, to, um, to say that insurance companies cannot have um, viruses as exclusions in their policies. Um, and this is happening in New Jersey, and so this may be a real possibility here in New York. Great. And then one more thing is we did get this information from another coalition. They're looking to join forces so that we have a lot of people on board as we really get everyone to pay attention to what's happening and how small businesses are being neglected. A lot of these clauses only affect businesses with people under 100 uh, employees, which is mind boggling. And the other point is that together we may have to work through a law firm. And so that, that'll also start taking shape if we need to file a class action suit, which is uh, something that's come up a few times. So lastly, just the most important thing is that file a claim, even if you think that, that your, your coverage doesn't cover you, file that claim anyway for your business interruption insurance. And then if anybody has any questions or resources, please reach out to us at contact at nycartc.com. And also forward this on, this is much bigger than just New York City, so this is something that will affect each major market. Thank you and good luck. Thank you.